I'm Dr. Kiki, and this is the TWIT Network's Top 25 Green Tech Innovators Series. This episode of Green Tech Today is brought to you by the Eco-Imagination Challenge from GE. GE and its partners are awarding $200 million to ideas that help build the next generation power grid for the 21st century. For more information and to view and comment on ideas, go to ecomagination.com forward slash challenge. What's got two wheels, a lot of speed, but doesn't make much noise? Zero motorcycles. Hailing from midway between Santa Cruz and Silicon Valley, this Scotts Valley, California company is leading the pack in electric motorcycle innovation with American-made bikes that will bring out the environmentalist and even the biggest gearhead. With three bikes on the market and more on the way, they have something for almost everyone. Gene Banman is the CEO of Zero Motorcycles. All right, most motorcycles that we see we know them because we hear them first. Can you turn this bike on for us so that we can, we can get, a, get a listen to it? Well, it's actually already on. Oh, I, I turned it on before you came up. <laughs> so it's totally quiet. It's totally quiet. So how does a person know? I mean, they've turned it on. What indicates that the bike is on? Yeah, so there's a, a dash light that's on. The headlight is always on. Um, and of course, there's a very loud horn, so you can let people know that you're coming if, uh, if you see that uh, you need to <laughs> let them know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Tell me more about this bike. What, what makes this bike stand out from all the others? Yeah, so it's, it's a battery electric powertrain. Uh, it's uh, the latest in uh, lithium ion battery technology, uh, which allows us to put a lot of energy into this 90-pound uh, battery right here. Um, these uh, batteries have a life of uh, eight years, uh, eight, eight plus years really, uh, so they, they last the life of the bike. And that, really one of the key points about electric motorcycles is the lack of, of maintenance. Uh, so the battery lasts eight plus years, the motor has only one moving part. So there's no, no fluids to change, no tune-ups to do, no rebuilds. Right, no it's oil changes. Exactly, just plug and go. <laughs> and uh, that's a totally different ownership experience. You just plug it in when you get home, and it's already always ready to go. Uh, this bike gets about uh, 30 to 40 miles around town, uh, which is great for you know town use, doing errands. Uh, uh, some people are out on their ranches checking out their ranches, and uh, you know it's it's a it's a great uh, motorcycle for that kind of use. It's it's not a long distance road motorcycle. Right. Uh, that kind of application of battery electric technology is in the future. Uh, but for getting around town, it, the, this technology is really super right now. Yeah, if you're on highways, what's the max mileage that people have gotten out of it? Yeah, so it, this bike will go uh, 67 miles an hour, so you can get on the freeway for a few exits. Sometimes that's important, even around town. Yeah. Uh, but if you just peg it, you know, at full blast, 67 <laughs> miles an hour, uh, you'll get only about 22 miles of range. Okay. So it's really not a freeway commuter, it's a get around town kind of uh, machine. Now this particular what's, what's, one... What's, what's yeah. zero to 60? Like how, how long to, to get to get going fast. Yeah, it's, it's about uh, 14, 15 seconds, uh, zero to 60. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, it's, it's really quick, zero to 45, which in around town, that's really the key thing. With a top speed of 67, it kind of, you know, it tapers, the acceleration tapers off as you get towards 60. Yeah, so what, what should consumer, what do, what do consumers need to know about this bike? Uh, basically, the, the range is, is something they have to think about. You yeah. know, what is their usage model for the bike? And, and they have to think about the kind of riding they're going to do and, and does it fit in with this model. Uh, I think they have to get their head around the idea that you don't ride it till you're out of gas and then go find a gas station. Basically, you leave home every morning with a full tank, essentially. Yeah, how right. long does it take to charge the batteries if you have drained them? If you've completely drained them, it takes about four hours. Okay, where's the plug? How do you plug this thing in? Yeah, the so it's a 110. Uh, here's the plug right here. Uh, there's a cable that, uh, an ordinary uh, cord that plugs into this. This is basically the same as a computer cord. So wall socket. Wall basically. socket. You don't need any special special socket like 
in your house to be able to plug it in. Exactly right. Any 110 uh, circuit, it pulls about 10 amps out of the wall. Most circuits are 15 to 20 amps, so it's just fine. It won't uh, break any of your circuit breakers. And the cost of this bike right now? So these two bikes, the street bike and the dual sport bike, are uh, 9950. Okay, so uh, the battery is about half the cost the, of the, the battery. The battery is about <laughs> half the cost. However, there's uh, uh, government incentives for consumers. Uh, you get a 10% tax credit from the federal government, so that's a thousand dollars off. And then uh, various states have additional incentives. For example, in California, we have a $1,500 rebate from the California Air Resources Board. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Georgia, there's a $2,000 rebate. In Colorado, there's a $4,300 rebate. Wow, buy it in Colorado. <laughs> if you live there, absolutely. <laughs> so depending on where you live, uh, you can get a very, very good deal on these motorcycles. So this is your dual sport bike. What are right. these other bikes behind us, and, and what are the main differences? Right. So so the dual sport, as, as I said, has the, the knobby tires and the, and the taller suspension. Uh, Using the same frame, uh, we also did a supermoto style uh, bike with the pure street tires. It sits a little lower to the ground, uh, and it, of course it has the smoother uh, uh, riding ro uh, road tires. Uh, but the, the other characteristics are very similar, six to seven miles per hour top speed, same kind of range, uh, just a different usage model. This one you can go take on the trails as well as on the street. This one is more uh, pure street bike. Pure street, and then back here we have pure dirt. Yeah, so this is where the company got started. We got started with uh, 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 dirt bikes, uh, and the, the huge advantage of quiet dirt bikes is that you can ride them in your backyard track without uh, irritating your neighbors. Or, or you can set up uh, riding parks in, in, that, in, in urban areas and get permits. And so uh, there's, a, uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of these bikes out being ridden uh, in people's backyards and in, in local areas without, you know, without bothering people. Yeah, and, and, there, and there, does this get off the line faster? Is it, um, or does it have a, a, a different top speed? Yeah, so the, you know, the, the nice thing about electric motors is maximum torque at zero RPM. So on dirt bikes especially, where you're doing a lot of cornering, you know, that torque coming out of the corner is just really exciting. And these, these are super light bikes. This is only 170 pounds. Uh, and uh, that's about 100, 100 pounds less Lighter. than your typical gas uh, dirt bike. Mm -hmm. And so very, very maneuverable, very torquey, uh, a lot of fun to ride. Sounds like it. And yeah. do you ride? I do, I do. I've been riding since I was 17. Awesome. Yeah. Will, you, will you take one of these bikes for a sure. spin for us so yeah. we can see it, see it go? Absolutely. Thanks, so right. we'll get, let you get into your, your helmet and your leathers. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. Next up, the super geeky stuff. That's the stuff I love. We're gonna talk motors, batteries, engineering of these extra special electric bikes. That's up next, stay tuned. We're partnering with uh, four of the, the biggest uh, venture capital firms in the clean energy space, three in the US, one in Europe. Uh, you know, again, we think that the combination of GE investment and venture capital investment is going to allow us to increase innovation. It's going to allow us to accelerate new ideas. It puts us shoulder to shoulder with some of the smartest tech investors. And we can use the, what I would call the industrial clout of GE to bring technologies to this marketplace faster. GE announced its challenge at a San Francisco event along with its four venture capital partners. Emerald Technology Ventures, Foundation Capital, Kleiner Perkins Caulfield & Byers, and Rockport Capital Partners have all joined with GE. Ideas from companies and individuals can be entered through the Ecoimagination.com website for the next 10 weeks. So check out Ecoimagination.com. Welcome back. This is Abe Askenazi. He's the VP of Engineering here at Zero Motorcycles. We've got a number of batteries laid out here on the table. What's the difference between them and why do you have different batteries for different bikes? Sure. So we have our X battery uh, on the top here and both of these are the same S battery, we call it. So we, we have a street bike and we have a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. um, it turns out that for the street, you know, what people want the most these days is range. It's all about the range. Same thing in cars. 
uh, electric cars, electric motorcycles, for the street. It's all about the range, how far you can go. Um, so we have a, you know, a larger pack. It's actually twice the capacity of our X battery, which is our dirt bike battery. Mm -hmm. um, and for the uh, street bike guys, uh, removability, the ability to take the battery out of the, out of the bike, it's, it's not that, you know, intense of a, of a requirement. Right. So, so we put the larger battery inside of the chassis and we don't, it's, we don't accommodate the, you know, replacement of the easy replacement of the battery. On the dirt bike, um, dirt bike guys are really about, you know, the action and, you know, they go, they ride in their, in the, in the motocross track or, or, or off on the trails for, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe an hour, and they're, they're done for, for that time, and they, right. they can take the battery out and put it on a charger and get it charged up and then put it back in and go, and go out in a session again. That works great for them. So the applications are very different. We have a, right. we have a dirt bike frame here that you can see uh, where you can see how the, the battery, that X battery, slides, slides in and out right very in. easily. Uh, and the S frame here that's used on both of our street bikes, the S and DS street bikes, um, the battery goes uh, from the front and it's inside of the... Right, so it's, uh, you'd probably have to take off the front wheel to be able to right. actually get to the battery. To, to get it out. To get it out. Yeah, you can service yeah. the battery and frame, but if you want to get the battery out, then you'd have to do that, yes. Okay, so the, so Zero Motorcycles, the, you're, you're designing different bikes for different uses, the batteries are also for different uses, Absolutely. for different types of people. Absolutely. Are you, so you have completely different, you're just com different consumers you're designing for in these yeah. cases. You know, that actually translates fairly well from the internal combustion engine uh, world. You know, the, you take a look at dirt bikes versus street bikes, they're, they're two different animals completely. The requirements, the usage requirements are very different. So mm -hmm. what's important to a street bike may not be important at all to a dirt bike guy. The beauty of Zero Motorcycles is that we're not an electric transportation company. We're a motorcycle company. Okay. So we are, you know, we listen to our customers and our customers are, are not very different. We do have a bit of a, of a reach in the segment uh, because of the electric motorcycle part of it. Mm -hmm. But it's still motorcycle guys, people that would be interested in a motorcycle and, and we need to be listening to those customers and not to just uh, you know, electrical <laughs> geeks that, that, that are interested in just that part of the technology. Right, so weight is a big issue for Absolutely. all of this. Um, the, I, the, the, the sport bike is 270 and the dirt bike is how much? 175, yeah. 175, so 100 pounds lighter. How much lighter is the battery for the dirt bike? The battery is about 40 pounds uh, for the dirt bike and it's about twice that um, for the street bike. We, you, as you'll see here, the, if you take a look at this pack, the, we call it again the X pack, um, it's, it's two of them that fit inside of the S battery. Okay. The, the battery ends up being a bit heavier because we put, we put a lot of the um, battery management systems, um, uh, bike management systems inside of the battery itself, mm -hmm. whereas on the X pad, those are external and this is just a battery just pack pretty much. Um, so that, so the package ends up being more than twice as heavy because of that, but it, it in capacity, in actual cell capacity, is just twice as, as big as this. Life expense expectancy on both types of batteries about the same? Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a bit longer on the street bikes just because of the usage model. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, we're saying we have a, over, over five years um, life expectancy on both batteries. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Can I pick up one of these frames? They're Absolutely. pretty light, aren't they? Okay, yes, so this is are. this is the street frame, right? Mm -hmm. <sighs> I feel like I look like the Incredible Hulk, but it's really light, actually. It's really not. How much does this weigh? Uh, I think that one is around 17 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. The and, and this one is a bit lighter than uh, than the street bike frame. It is. It's it's substantially lighter. Yeah. I feel uh, like I just I could just throw it around a little bit. <laughs> it's 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 um it's made of aluminum, thin gauge um, aluminum, uh, high strength uh, alloy. So um, what what's used by the aircraft people, um, and and the intent again is um, both from a motorcycle standpoint. So motorcycles, 
you are on a car, the car is, is, is a big thing, you get into it, you're part of this big thing. Sure, weight is important on cars, but not as important on motorcycles. Motorcycles you throw around, um, you know, it, it's much more of athletic usage of, of the vehicle than, than a car is. So, but so you're designing is, for being airborne. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, and, and on the street, you're designing for, you know, quick transitions uh, and being nimble and stuff. So. So from a motorcycle standpoint, weight has always been important and we, and we appreciate that. Now you throw the fact that, that range is important and you know, batteries are not quite, they don't have the, the energy capacity as, as uh, gasoline does. So now weight is even more important for us. In order for this thing mm -hmm. to go faster, further, um, it, it needs to be light from that, from that standpoint as well. So we're very conscious about weight. Okay, tell me a little bit about the motor in, the, in sure. this motorcycle. It's not combustion. We're not looking at a combustion engine. Well, how is it, how's it powered? Uh, it's it's a, an electric motor. Uh, it's a brush motor, DC. Can you, can you um, show me how, where, where that, how that all works? How it all works. So the battery hooks up on the one side, and the shaft rotates it's heavy. on the other side. You know, it, it, is, it is heavy. But if I try to do this with an internal combustion engine and, you know, I'm bringing it off the table and show it to you, there's no way that I could do that. So it is heavy because, you know, the magnets and everything else that's, that's built into it. But for the power output, it is, it is really not that heavy at all. So, you know, electric motors are, you know, 90 plus percent efficient. Uh, internal combustion engines are 20 percent plus efficient. I mean, there, so it's, it's quite, quite a difference. And, and, you know, and you really feel it in and the weight, which, which goes into making the bike. We, you mentioned before that our street bike is around 275 pounds mm -hmm. or so. A comparable powered gas motorcycle is about 370 pounds or so, or more, more like much, 400 pounds. That's much, much lighter. So, so we're, we're a lot lighter, and, and I guess it has to do with the fact that, that we're very weight conscious, but also that the method of propulsion is a lot more efficient. Great. So method of propulsion, this currently is not a motor designed by Zero it's Motorcycles. This is, a, this is another company's motor. Are you in the process of developing your own? Uh, so I, I believe that it is public information that we were granted a uh, California Energy Commission grant. Um, and we're looking at uh, where, we, where we take the um, motorcycle-specific electric motor technology. Push, so the, there, push the envelope, so to speak. There's, there's a lot of interest in, um, in electric motors and in electric vehicles currently across, you know, across, uh, um, across the world, really. But specific to motorcycles, is someone doing you know, a motor that's specific to the needs of a motorcycle? Uh, you, don't, you don't see motorcycle companies using car engines um, internal combustion car engines mm -hmm. or internal combustion uh, industrial engines. All of those, all of the engines that are used on motorcycles today, on gas motorcycles today, are very specific to those motorcycles. That's not where the electric uh, motorcycle industry is yet. And so we hope that with that grant we can get it there so that we have a, a motor that's very specific to our, to our application. Okay. Can you show me um, how the air flows through the motorcycle and, and explain how the airflow system actually helps the bike's performance. A absolutely. So uh, one of the things that, just like on, on internal combustion engines, uh, it is the case that, that you need to keep that engine cool in order for, for it to perform effectively. Uh, so electric motors are a lot more efficient, but they still dissipate a bit of heat. Uh, what we have here is, is, we call it forced air induction, where we suck in air from the back of the, of, of the motorcycle and we channel it to the motor, you know, through this uh, conduit into the motor and it goes across the motor and keeps that, that rotor that's rotating inside of there uh, cool. So as, as we are creating a little bit of heat uh, in producing uh, the power to that, that we deliver to the motorcycle, we're, we're cooling that off and we're making the whole thing more efficient. Okay. So instead of air being used for combustion, it's for cooling. For cooling. It's the Absolutely. exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's uh, as we move forward and as we create motors that are more specific to our application, it may be that 
we find other ways of, of keeping the, the motor cool. Or, you know, we push efficiency to a level that maybe we don't need to have uh, forced air uh, induction. With the motors that are available now, in order to deliver the performance that, um, that we need to be delivering, uh, this was a solution, and it's a very effective solution. Yeah. And you, you ride yourself? Absolutely. 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 Yeah. What, are your, what are your personal impressions or uh, your feelings about riding electric versus riding the it, gas it's, motorcycle it's that you came question. from? It's a great question. So I, I grew up on gas motorcycles. I worked at a Buell motorcycle company for 15 years. So I have lots of motorcycle experience. I've ridden a number of, uh, of motorcycles, not only Buells, but a bunch of competitive vehicles. Um, and I thought I knew, you know, everything there was to know about motorcycles. And, and I, you know, and I was a bit um, apprehensive about, you know, the lack of, of sound, um, you know, just, just a different riding experience. What, what I found when I came out to ride this motorcycle uh, as part of my interview was that you don't miss the noise. You don't miss that. Uh, it's, it's, it, the, having, having for the first time being on a motorcycle where you're experiencing your, your, surrounding, your surroundings pretty fully, you're very much aware of what's going on. It's, it's really neat. I mean, it's really, I, I can't tell you that it's better. Um, I think that there's something to be said about this, you know, the uh, sound of a motorcycle and how that elicits some sort of emotional response. Um, so I don't, I can't tell you that it's, but I, but I can tell you that it's different in a good way. It's different in a way that, that maybe, yeah, it doesn't give you that, you know, acceleration, if you will, but the, the ability to, to feel, it's like the magic carpet ride. Right, you're, you're moving, but you can't really hear what's moving you forward, and you're aware of everything that's going on around you. It's it's really quite neat. So I'm, I was sold pretty quickly after I rode the motorcycle. Yeah. Well, for someone who currently does not ride motorcycles, yeah. these things are selling me on the possibility of learning. <laughs> yeah, <it's okay. laughs> and we should talk about that. So the things that are that are different in a good way from uh, from um, you know introduction to the sport, uh, there is no shifting. Right. No so shifting. there is no clutch. There is no speeds. It's just a, it's a direct drive motor. Uh, as as you can see, the motor is is connected directly to the chain. Uh, we show it on the one that's on the bench. There's a sprocket mm -hmm. that's mounted right to the output shaft of the motor. Um, so it's direct drive. There, there's no uh, transmission, uh, so there's no need for a clutch, for shifting, for any of that complication, which also goes into making the motor light, right? You don't have all those. Um, an internal combustion engine isn't just the, you know, the, the piston and the cylinder and you know, what's, what's creating the power, but it's the transmission and the primary drive. You know, it's, there's, it's a pretty complicated... Um, unit. In terms of part count, we didn't talk about this before, but um, I've worked with engines for a very long time, and engines are very complicated things. I mean, if you take an engine apart, there's, so there's many valves pieces, and rings, yes. and there's you know, hundreds and hundreds of parts. There's only one moving part here. I mean, it's, it's, it's just the simplicity afforded by this technology is, is quite astounding, which goes into and also um, into the weight and, and, and the efficiency of the thing. But anyway, going, going back to the, the fact that you don't need to be shifting this thing, uh, it, it's, it's, again, you, you figure that you'd miss it, but on the one hand, the reason that you have shifting uh, on internal combustion engines is because the power is made in such a way that, that you need to have that transmission. So an internal combustion engine it makes power higher in its RPM, especially smaller engines. Uh, you got to spool that engine up to, to get to where the power is. And, and that, that the power band ends up being pretty narrow. So to stay in the power band, you need to you know, be constantly shifting to you know, match the vehicle speed with that narrow band of engine speed. Mm -hmm. um, with this uh, electric motor, you're making most, of your, it's, it's exactly backwards, it's the opposite. You make the power down, down low, it's got lots of, uh, lots of torque, and that's, that's where you, you're feeling. Of course you make power with RPM, but relative to what you feel, the torque that's being put, put out at the, uh, at the rear tire's contact patch, it's, it's happening from zero on to at some point where, where it starts to, to taper off. Right. So, Around 40 so, miles an hour. So you don't. So you don't. So you don't need. You don't need that uh, constant need for or constant requirement for shifting in order to stay stay on the sweet spot. The sweet spot is quite broad and it starts from zero, which is which is 
very different and unique. Yeah. It is different. It's very different and unique. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah, the interview, you. Abe. And thank you for watching the Twit Network's Top 25 Green Innovators in the Green Tech Industry. I'm Dr. Kiki, and stay tuned for next week's show, where I'll be somewhere else. Let's wait and see. That's it for this episode of Green Tech Today. Subscribe at twit.tv forward slash GTT and never miss a show. If you have a question or a comment, email greentechtoday at twit.tv or you can leave a voicemail at 415-GT-TODAY.